Hi, and thanks for watching this video where I'll be taking you through a simple HRSG or heat recovery steam generator uh, simulation in a 1D system level 2 called Flonex. I'll also be highlighting some of the post processing capabilities uh, of the tool. Again, the objective is to uh, demonstrate a simplified model of the high pressure section of an HRSG uh, and to hopefully give you a high level understanding of, of the workflow for setting up. Uh, similar models in not only Flonex but in, in, in system level uh, tools in general. I'll be exploring some of the typical results for a transient startup scenario uh, and showcase the ease of results reporting and, and post-processing in Flonex. So what's important to realize is that our model is going to be based on uh, actual geometry and first principles. So starting from that point we characterize the model and translate uh, it into inputs uh, that are meaningful uh, to Flonex. The important thing to realize here is that there's more than one way to set up uh, an HRSG or a boiler model and, and how you do it is really going to depend on um, what you're trying to capture uh, with your simulation uh, and, and what you're trying to, to get out of it, what results are important to you. So if we look at some of the inputs uh, we've used, um, we're using actual steam and air side diameters, heights, length, circumferences, things like that. And these are all inputs to pipe components in Flonex. And then we're, we've calculated the conduction uh, and convection surface areas, um, which are also going to be input into, into the model. So if we look at the actual Flonex model itself, uh, you'll see that pipe components will represent flow paths of, of the gas and steam uh, flowing through tubes. Um, it's important to realize that although graphically there's only one pipe component on our drawing canvas, um, it's representing hundreds of pipes in a bundle. Um, heat transfer elements uh, are modeling the heat transfer from the gas to the steam. Uh, and then we have a couple of flow resistance components in there just to, to represent uh, valve and turbine losses. Um, there's also a node component with uh, level tracking uh, that allows us to model the fluid separation within the steam drum. If we look further at how fluid material properties are configured in our model, we're using detailed water and steam properties and, and you know actual uh, blue gas composition uh, and our solid material has a conductivity that varies with with temperature. So again uh, very accurate representation of what's happening in the real world. With regards to heat transfer phenomenon, uh, we're modeling, obviously we need to be modeling conduction through our pipe walls um, and convection on the gas and steam side of those walls. And also, the th since this is a transient simulation, the thermal inertia of our solid mate pipe material is, is quite important as well. Um, the heat transfer correlations we're using, uh, on the steam side we're using Tesis Bolter for flow inside a tube. Um, and on the gas side, we're using a user-defined convection coefficient uh, that we calculated in order to obtain known steam side conditions. What I'll be showing you when I bring up the model is that we have a couple of options here. And again, it's really going to depend on, on, on what information you have and what you're trying to capture. Uh, the results we're going to be looking at, um, we're going to be looking at transient gas and steam side uh, metal temperatures. Uh, the fluid temperatures and also the convection coefficients on, on the gas and steam side. Uh, and then I've also plotted out the t a temperature distribution along the pipe lengths. Uh, so the pipe that presents uh, the superheater, for example, can be incremented and we can get a discretized look at, at how that temperature varies. Uh, the two tables at the bottom here illustrate um, just our start up uh, to full load. So our transient scenario where uh, we have an increase in the gas uh, side inlet temperature and the steam side inlet temperature as well. So there are one or two inputs I think are worth noting um, before I run the simulation. Uh, the first is uh, if we take a look at the pipe you can see I have a number in parallel option which is how we represent the two bum bundles uh, and I have a number of increments option which allows me to discretize the pipe um, across its across its length. Uh, if we go look at the results, uh, I can get results for 
uh, each sub element uh, and what I've done in the report is plot out the temperature distribution for the entire length. Uh, if we take a look at the heat transfer element uh, so I can specify uh, multiple conduction layers these can have different materials and different thicknesses and then uh, upstream and downstream of that conduction layer uh, I have several heat transfer options uh, I can either have convection radiation or a combination of both uh, and then with regards to convection coefficient I can either uh, have it be user defined or calculated uh, based off of one of the available correlations. In this case on this downstream represents the, the steam side um, and that's going to be Dieter's Bolte equation. Uh, if the user has some correlation he wishes to implement it's quite a simple process to do that. Um, typical results I can get uh, from my heat transfer element are minimum, maximum and average surface temperatures uh, calculated convection coefficient and of course a convection conduction and radiation heat transfer. So if we take a look at the results report uh, you'll see it's basically just uh, embedded uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet uh, to which I can pass uh, result values. Um, well we have here our average gas side metal temperatures of the superheater uh, that I've plotted out for um, various time steps during my transient simulation and if I scroll down a bit what I've previously set up as well is uh, the temperature distribution results for you know, one of the pipes in that superheater as well so we can get an idea of how that temperature is changing as we move uh, down the length of the pipe. These are pretty easy to set up so I'll uh, give you a quick uh, demonstration of how to do that. Uh, Again, if we take um, from our heat transfer element results window, uh, for example, convection coefficient downstream, uh, which in this case is uh, representing the steam side, um, I can assign that to a cell in my Excel report. Um, I can specify when I want uh, the, re the result to be written out. Um, in what format I want it to be written out um, and then what's also pretty neat is uh, Flonix will actually create a graph uh, for you. Let's go ahead and rename this guy um, and, and move it out of the way. So if I now run the simulation, uh, I should start to see these cells be populated. If you are interested in learning more about Flownex simulation environments, email, call or visit the website and set up a discussion with our technical staff at PADT.